It's a beautiful sunny day in London, and you're watching Talk of the Town with me, Harmeet Singh Sani. I'm here in the presence of a musical genius with a huge global following, the one and only A.R. Rahman. So the man sitting next to me is famously known as the Mozart of Madras and has won every award in the world, from Filmfare Awards to the Oscars. He's not just famous for his talent, but also for his humility and the honesty he has towards his music. Jinke sar ho ish ki chao, paon ke niche jannat hogi. Padma Bhushan A.R. Emanji, what a privilege to have you on B for you. Thank you. Um you know, I was going through all my questions last night and someone close to me reminded me that A.R. Rahman has been interviewed a thousand times <laughs> and that got me thinking, do you remember your first ever interview? Who was it with and what was your state of mind? I think my first interview was uh, by a gentleman for India Today. And then a uh, TV interview was for a program called Surabi. Mm. Many years ago? I don't even remember the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Take me right back to the musical journey. How did it all start from? It's a family thing because my father was in music and my mother wanted me to be in music after he died. And so my, yeah. It all started from there. You made the song Chaya Chaya many years ago. The song still has the same impact it had all those years ago. Some people have even said that it's Chanya Chanya that made money for the distributors of Dilse. At that time, did you or Sukhvinderji have any idea of this impact? I think before any song, if you have anything to do with fame or money, it, the purity gets lost. So you have to think that it's for us, it's for that moment. Um, and. That's one of the reasons I think some of the songs stay beyond their, uh, you know, the movie fame or becomes timeless, I would say. Some critics have said that A.R. Rahman gives some of his best work to Mani Ratnam. What's your take on that? Yeah, he's right, they're right. <laughs> because I think Mani Ratnam um, is not that he gives the same brief, but he has a very open mind to accept good things. Some of the people are very rigid, so this is what we want. So Mani Ratnamji takes a song, a beautiful tune, and adapts a screenplay according to that. Like even Subhashi does that. Uh, so when we work together, he takes something good and he changes the story. And my two favorite ARMR albums are Dilse and Tal, again with Mani Ratnam sir and Subhash sir. 
Is it true that you sleep during the day and work at night time? Mostly. <laughs> Any reason behind that or just how, is how you prefer? Mm, uh, it's a habit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your concert. Tell me about the team and what can the audiences expect this time? Um, so, the first time I performed in London was post uh, Bombay Dreams, I think. And so those days I used to have 12 singers, like all the best singers in India would come. Hmm. Sonu Nigam, SPB, G and uh, Shankar Mahadev and Sukhundar, Udit Narayan. So now they're all big names. They're amazing. They're doing very well in their own way. And of course dancers. And so it used to be a, a, so much of tension for me to, to put this all together because at that point of time, uh, not many people had individual musician shows, right? They would have an artist, sure. they would have an actor. So to do a show independently in, in a composer's name, I had to do all that. And now I think when people are now used to, you know, they would come for a whole show, mm -hmm. and I, I'm very grateful for their support. So we want to go back to the basics of music, where we can do something very intimate, face to face, stops and starts and be interactive so it's easy with the band which now we've put together whom we have a great fun we had 18 concerts last year in the u.s how do you choose the song list for these concerts what's the thought process especially since you have so many songs to choose from it is chosen with a slight thought of what people might like and also what we like and when we have uh, fun on stage, people reflect that. And should not be struggling on some song which we... Because <laughs> many songs are made for movies. Sure. And we can't... Um, it's difficult to perform those with, without an orchestra or dancers and everything. You performed all over the world. What's your favorite place? And you don't have to say London. I think uh, this year, I would say... Was the NH7 this year or last year? I think it was this year. Yes. Might be wrong myself. In India, I think Pune. It was a whole new audience. I could see younger people. Hmm. You know, they were like screaming. <laughs> so it was very, I would say Pune had left a very big impact. So Pune it is. Now I have asked this question to a few people in the past, but I have a feeling I'll get a different answer this time. What's your take on the use of Melodyne and other technology? It's a blessing and a curse. The moment you have the thought of, okay, I can sing a couple of takes and we can correct it later, I don't give enough time in singing. I mean, not that everybody is capable of singing amazingly well, just that the time spent on the mic before people used to spend three hours, four hours recording a song, getting it right. Now you can just do a couple of takes and say, oh, you know what, correct that pitching and then go on. But now, even now, we've gone back to the basics now. Now, the songs which I'm doing, I get a singer, do a first pass, they come back again, do second pass, and because they don't lose anything, and they learn the song better, they sing better next time. So we've gone back, I've gone back to the, uh, what Naushaji used to do, yeah. 11 days of singing, and <laughs> Lata used to complain, like he missed, I would learn a song in three days, but it would make me come for 11 days, and those are the songs which are uh, like history books for us now. So you're going back old school. Can it be frustrating as a composer with the use of so much technology, and like you said, singers are not putting in all the, these hours. They just want to do it in one or two takes. And no, it's not their problem. They are ready to do it, whether I have the time. <laughs> um, because I'm traveling a lot. True. And even when I sing, I feel like when I sing for an hour and get the takes right, I don't need my night. When I don't have time, I have to catch a flight. Yeah. So I just do for 15 minutes, I do a whole take, and then ask people to correct it. So it's convenience uh, sometimes takes over. But I wouldn't blame anybody. It's just that uh, people are much more hasty, I would say. Let's take a short break. Don't go anywhere, because we'll be right back on B for you.
So we're back from our break. You're watching Talk of the Town with me, Harmeet Singh Sani. I'm here in London with Academy Award winner A.R. Rahman. You know, you have the most unique tone and delivery as a singer, and you don't sing very often. Who do you think suits your voice best, or who would you like to sing for, say, in the Indian film industry? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, because every time I sing, I feel like it, my voice doesn't match this guy. <laughs> but uh, then I keep asking people, no, sir, it's perfect, it's yeah. matching. So, okay, fine. Yeah, well, it's, it's a magical voice, if I may say so. On that note, again, amongst the young generation of singers in India, who's your favorite? Of course, Arjit Singh is very amazing. I like uh, Atif Aslam too. And I like uh, Mohit. Um, Javed Ali, Sukhinder, of course. And I would love to bring back Udit Naranji because his voice and even Kumar Shanuji, their voice are great. I think people, um, there's no justification in, in pushing people out and say, oh, they're the 90s voice. Mm -hmm. A voice are voices and, and it has a suit of character. And so, in fact, um, bringing back Alkaji back in uh, Tum Saath Ho was like a gamble, you know. Mm -hmm. we, some of the people said, "Ah, oh, why do you want to do this?" I said, "No, this voice is unmatchable. It's amazing quality. Let's bring it back." And then it proved very well. The people loved it. Let's talk about Carnatic music. Tell me about the influence of Carnatic music in your life, and how important is it for young aspiring singers? I like both Carnatic music and Hindustani. They are like so related to each other. And the, um. I feel like younger singers have the opportunity of reinventing the, the delivery styles of it. And of course they're going to get uh, criticisms for that, but they should have an own vision. Like I particularly love what Sheila Chandra did in the UK hmm. with, uh, with some of the bowls and some of the tunes. She's she done very little. I'm a big fan of Sheila Chandra. You've achieved everything I can think of. you worked with the biggest names in the world. You've been appreciated, you've been successful, and you're now a living legend. Present day... <laughs> not at all, it, it's, it's true. What I'm I want... Just starting. What gets you out of bed today? What is inspiring A.R. Rahman now that you've achieved everything? You know the, the, the conservatory I have back in Chennai, which I totally forgot to tell other interviews. <laughs> Uh, those kids, you know, mm. to provide a platform for them to learn music, to facilitate things, buying a piano for, mm. for prodigies. We have like three, four prodigies who are less six to nine years old who can play Chopin, you know, blindfolded. <laughs> so that keeps me going, that me working and being successful reflects my support to their education, in a way. In fact, that was my next question to tell, uh, to tell me about your academy in Chennai. So that's one of the main reasons. I've been past probably four or five years. That's been the backbone of my uh, energy source. What's a typical day in the life of ARM on? Just a typical Monday. Um, or shall I say evening? What's a typical evening in the life of ARM on? Well, I work at home mostly mm. back in Chennai. If I'm, if I'm in India and in Chennai, so I finish all my stuff with meetings and greetings and everything, family, everything by around eight or nine, and then I start my music. And we either go till the morning or we finish in a couple of hours. And what are your views on how Indian music has progressed over the years, especially the recent fusion that's happening? A lot of good things and bad things. The sound quality has improved, production has improved, and, but definitely lyrics could go much, could become more inspiring, I would say. But the, the need of the R is definitely to satisfy what people want and what, what they need. And, That'll be nice to see a renaissance in that area. If there's one genre of music you haven't touched upon yet, what would that be? I don't know. <laughs> I want to go more deeper into classical music. 
hmm. whether it's Indian or Western. But Ramanji, there are a lot of young aspiring singers who would love to work with you, and not just singers, musicians, who just want A.R. Rahman to listen to them once, even if it's for five seconds. How can all these people reach out to you? They can go to YouTube, and then when they get a lot of followers, mm. I'll see them. <laughs> so the trick is, if you want to work with A.R. Rahman, you need to get followers and views on YouTube, and genuine ones. <laughs> yeah, that's how I found Janita. I found Sana Maiduti who sang. Because mm. then it's tested and also it, it uh, reaffirms their confidence in themselves. That they don't need anybody and they can do by themselves. So when they come in, they, they shine much better than starting from square one. <laughs> you work with singers from all over the world, from Ash King to Sukhvinder Singh. How do you decide which singer is suitable for which song? How do you decide what to wear in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I could answer that question, but whatever looks good, whatever makes me feel happy okay. is what I wear. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about Virat Kohli. Do you think he's a good singer? He, he was pretty good. He was uh, expected, um, I, didn't ex I had no expectations, but he could sing in tune and he had, he had a very good sense of uh, a friendly kind of sense mm. and so we had fun. Do you think he's using his cricket discipline and his form and his mental state right now in the collaboration with yourself? Did he, d d is, is it linked in any way? I think he's very, very talented and uh, he could dance very well better than me <laughs> and he could um, so we used him in a very, like we sampled his voices mm. and re-triggered and then he sang in tune almost. But I, unfortunately I spent very less time with him. Mm. And we had 50 other people watching us doing, which usually we have one person in the room with me. But 50 people were watching what he was doing. So India's number one batsman is making his singing debut with A.R. Rahman. Yeah, did you, you hear the song? Not yet, but I've seen clippings. And, and I've seen clippings of the trailer as well, and they look really good. Thank you. It's already, the song is launched already. You can check it yeah. out. I will be, definitely. You've also worked with Ustad, Ustad Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. Tell me about that experience. That's one of the special ones. Is he was uh, definitely a great inspiration to many generations. And uh, so that night in Lahore where we recorded is one of the nights which I'll never forget mm -hmm. in my life. What's A.R. Rahman's five-year plan, as in, and what are your hobbies? What do you like to do when you're not working? I'm never working. <laughs> the work name comes only when there's a deadline. Till then, it's all, we're having fun. We're, having, we're doing something which you're mm. very passionate about, which is music. Surely, in the past, you must have been criticized by people, and sometimes people say some really harsh things. How do you deal with that criticism? And what advice will you give to other musicians out there facing that? You have to uh, elevate yourself to be the harshest critic. And when that comes in, and um, so you supersede every other critic. <laughs> and you become a better critic than everybody else. Mm -hmm. You won't be bothered. Because the criticism which comes, you've already done it to yourself. And you can say, yeah, I know that. I'm, I'm working on it in your mind. It's awesome. Finally, can I please ask you to sing one or two lines of my favorite A.R. Rahman song, if you don't mind? Or any song of your choice? I'm not prepared yet. <laughs> <laughs> totally understand. Thank you so much for your time. And good luck with the concert. And again, it's been an honor having you on B for You. And that was Academy Award winner A.R. Rahman. I hope you've enjoyed the interview. This is me, Harmeet Singh Sani, saying goodbye. Keep watching B for You. <laughs>